So during the overhaul, this Kawasaki 440, which goes into a 1973 Arcat Panther, we ran into a no-spark problem. Um, there are some things that I should have changed during the overhaul, and I didn't. Uh, there were some tests I should have did, but I didn't. So this video is just takes that out of the overhaul video, and will detail out how to chase electrical problems on this Kawasaki 440. It'll apply to a lot of the other Kawasaki engines that are using the Articat platform, so hopefully this helps somebody out, because I didn't find much on the internet. I had to figure out a lot of stuff for myself, so hope this helps. Thanks for watching. All right, we got a little bit of a setback. I got no spark. So one of the things is the electrical specifications for the 1973 Kawasaki 440 are not in the service manual. I do some digging on the internet and I was able to come up with this set of specifications. So this applies to the 73 Panther 440. As you can see down here, all of these figures will apply to the 340, the 400, and the 440. So one of the first checks that we're gonna do are the magneto coils that are on the engine itself. We're looking for 1.13 ohms plus or minus 10%, and that's gonna be from the red wire and the white wire to ground. Coming through your grommet, you got a white wire and a red wire. One of your connections is gonna to be to ground, and the other one of your meter is going to go on there for your chart. Again, we're looking for 1.13 ohms or close to that. I'm showing 1.2 ohms. We repeat for the other coil, magneto coil, 1.1 ohms. So, the coil in our stator for each of our spark plugs tests good. Let's go on to the next check. All right, the primary ignition coil should be putting out about 1.6 ohms. And again, we're gonna go from the red and white wires on the coil side to ground. All right, so this is testing the primary coil on the coil side. We're looking for 1.61, 1.6 ohms. We test the other side. Again, this is from our coil side. One point six ohms. So we're good there. Let's go on to the next check. Alright, secondary coil, which is basically our spark plug wire. 5,165 ohms. Now, if you have a resistive cap on it, you have to remove that. So 5,000 ohms. Let's see what we get. So the first one checks out just a little bit low at 4.99 K ohms. So basically 5,000 ohms. And again, we're plus or minus 10%. We check the second spark plug wire. Aha, we've got an open. So at this point, my hunch is that this coil is bad. This coil is open. So I'm gonna pick up a used, another used coil. We're gonna try that. The other thing I'm worried about is the condensers. Now I did not replace the condensers on the stator. I'm thinking that was a mistake because um, I do have weak spark on this one, I mean, it's there, but it's not strong. This one is dead. So uh, I've got that donor 340 that we're gonna start picking some coils off of. I'm gonna do a spark check there and see what we got. I'll do some measurements on that, kind of repeat this process and see what we get. All right, so in our no spark troubleshooting video, we, uh, we ordered some parts. So I've got some new condensers. Here's the part number from Dennis Kirk. I got uh, some new spark plug caps because I need them anyway. There's the part number. And I got a used coil. It's a little bit higher resistance than what the book calls for, but at this point I'm just going to try it because I have it. So hopefully we get some spark out of this. Let's try it out. 
Okay, so here's our offending condensers. One here and one here. I'm gonna solder some new ones in. We're gonna change a few other parts and see if we can get any spark out of this thing. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is unsolder the first condenser. So you can see they got these fingers wrapped around here. Wow, that was kind of a sumbitch getting all those wires undone. But those three got to go back onto that condenser. Let's get this one out of here and see if we can get the new one in there effectively. Now, whenever I'm soldering, I like to use a little soldering paste. It just helps uh, helps everything grab on. Again, we'll see if this works. All right, so the wires are positioned. We're gonna do this first one. All right, first tab's done. We're gonna bend this one over like so. I do believe we got ourselves a, a good connection here. All right, so we're gonna repeat that for this side. And then we're gonna start putting things back together. I've already cleaned these points. I've checked the resistance of the ignition coils. We're good there. Hopefully that's it. Okay, so we got our new condensers in. I put the flywheel on temporary. I put our donor coil in, new spark plug caps, and I put in the old spark plugs. Let's see if we got spark. We got spark. I'm gonna call this a win, folks. We're gonna put this back together, get back to building our motor. Mint. All right, so both points are set to about 13 thousandths of an inch. This one is currently closed. So set them all 12 to 16 thou, and then we're gonna put the timing light on it. All right, so I've got my magneto timing light hooked up to the wires that came that come off of the points. And what we're looking for is right here to see that it the points open right at the fire marks. You can see that I am a little bit late. So what we need to do is adjust the screws in here on the stator plate to get those marks to line up. We'll see if we can make that happen. All right, so now we're in a situation where the right magneto fires right exactly where it needs to be. However, the left magneto is a little bit early. So we're going to open up the points on the left side just a touch over here. This is an aircraft magneto timing light. You can buy them at like aircraft spruce. Uh, they're not real expensive, but it's what I had and it's what I use. It worked great. The key to this whole thing is Two items. One, you need point setting of 12 to 16 thousandths, and you need it to fire at the right time. 
So we can see that the right magneto is firing exactly where it needs to be. Left magneto firing exactly where it needs to be. Point settings are within limits. I'm gonna call this a win. We're moving on. Hope that helped.